So in this domain, we'll discuss about data security in detail. Okay, so data encryption is the basic tool and also the most important tool which we use to basically secure the data in the cloud platform. Like basically, when we talk about the data in motion or data trust or data in use, also data encryption is one of the key solution which we can use. Why? Because why? If you have a proper secure encryption mechanism, uh, you can have more security and you can basically have more reliability on the public cloud platforms. I'll give an example. Let's say if I store my encrypted data on the cloud service provider and if I store the key file securely, I am a bit more safe. I can I, I have more more security and more, I have more safe like even if my data is lost or even if my data is copied, I am a bit more safe actually. Okay, that's it. So we have a lot of data security mechanisms like for example, uh, we have basically we will talk about the discovery and monitoring of files, how we can basically discover the files and we can monitor files, how we can secure the communications, what are the factors we use to encrypt my data, what is DLP, we discuss about DLP, right? Data leakage prevention, data loss prevention, and what is database access, damn, that means database access monitor or file access monitor, how basically the more access to the database is monitored with the help of DAM actually. And we have a DRM, mm -hmm. data rights or digital rights management, or information rights management okay see this is a simplistic view this is a very simple view of basically how we apply the security rules as per the life cycle okay so basically what happens is discovery tools like dlp etc okay we have some discovery tools like dlp see dlp means basically dlp mm -hmm. has to identify the file right if they want to allow mm -hmm. or block they want to identify the file right so basically the discovery yeah. tools will crawl to the file system and databases prior to moving the data Okay, mm -hmm. prior to moving the data, they will basically crawl into the file systems and databases. And what happens? The database activity monitoring will detect the data and transactions for the databases. Okay, and basically for file activity monitoring, what happens? We have a data loss prevention to analyze data as it is moved to cloud. Like for example, I have a data here in my organization gateway. So what happens is so basically I have a DLP in my organization gateway. So when I am transferring some file to cloud platform, this will analyze the files and if, see if the files are basically allowed to move or not okay then these are all forms of data monitoring and basically mean to locate sensitive data. Like, like for example if i'm trying to move some data which is not authorized dlp can either block or alert or reroute something like that okay that's it okay so basically we can encrypt the data at any of these points prior to moving the data within the cloud environment see this either we can do it the client server application level or while the data is basically more the wire via the network data data in use so the data in transit actually or i can use a third party like i can use a device basically dedicated to encrypt the data so all these things can be used for encryption so the only thing is i have to make sure data is encrypted in some point that's all if i can make mm -hmm. sure my data is properly encrypted in some point then things can be more easy for me okay like for example yeah. basically in the client server application of encryption I can encrypt the data as a file, as a data set, or even as a XML document. And basically, when I talk about network level encryption, I can have SSL, I can have TLS, I can have VPN, sorry, VPN, etc. Yeah. And basically, yeah. in the processor, what happens is usually there is an application, or let's say we can say a HSM is there that will encrypt the data before it is sent out of the organization. Clear? The next one is data storage encryption. Okay. So basically the process is basically discover and class I, we discussed already talk about creation of creation phase what happens in the creation phase itself we will classify the data okay so going back to the data security life cycle we introduced earlier understand that okay we will basically locate the sensitive data and we categorize or classify it uh, so we know we know which all controls are applicable don't forget basically while creation itself we will categorize classify the data so what is the advantage we can have proper security controls otherwise poor security controls can apply See this so this yeah. this is applied based on the classification, classification. don't forget is it clear that's it okay yes. and we must have proper encryption methodologies based on the type of cloud service model you can use and this is the best part keep the key files separate from the provider who is hosting data from the cloud provider hosting data keep the key file separate either it can be with, with you or a third party or whatever it is okay that's it so basically this is the cloud data encryption layers okay so the idea here is the higher up the more granular the controls of information access okay that means let's say for example so basically the lower you go the easier the encryption is to implement see basically what happens is basically mm -hmm. in the block storage you have more flexibility like you have the complete control it's like your hard disk or you can it is yep. we discussed, right yeah so basically in the block storage you have complete control you can have more effective encryption or you can have more trans more clarity okay at the same time as we go higher we have to rely on the cloud service provider actually right like basically for database now nowadays there is a feature called as transparent encryption 
Okay. So basically, mm. in the database level, we can encrypt transfer, and in the file level, we can have file level or object level encryption. For application, we have application level encryption like that. Is it clear? And as we discussed, for encryption, we have three types. Don't forget. As for encryption, we have three we three things to discuss. The first one is the data which I want to encrypt, the encryption engine or the encryption algorithm, we can say, and the key file. So these factors are something which is based on the thing. Okay, is it clear? So each of these components can be positioned in different locations. Like basically, for example, inside a virtual machine or on a dedicated hardware or let's say what happens is in a public or private cloud or let's say what happens is in a particular machine or in a hostware which with the key management service so like this basically we can deploy this anywhere we want okay that's it so the first one is encrypting is volumes how we can basically encrypt the is volume okay that's it so basically in this thing okay in this basically in this thing okay so what happens is when you talk about instance managed encryption okay what happens the instance is basically encrypt embedded in the os itself don't forget okay the instance yeah. is basically mm -hmm. embedded the in the is. os itself okay like for example yeah. bitlocker etc okay the mm -hmm. same time at the same time externally managed means okay externally managed means so in this kind of thing, okay, encryption, it is providing encryption as a service. That means that we have a dedicated component, okay, but like for example, it can be in the cloud, in the in the on-premises, or it can be an XSM device, which will externally manage encryption. And we have a proxy encryption. Proxy encryption means this proxy encryption is like a middleman. That means that it's a middleman that basically encrypts the data prior to entering the storage. Okay. Okay. Like for example, before entering the storage, data is encrypted. And before sending the user, mm -hmm. the data is decrypted. So this mm -hmm. guy will handle the encryption and decryption separately. That's what you call as okay. proxy based encryption. Proxy. Okay. This is the example Sorry. for instance based man this is the example for instance based managed encryption. See, so the key yeah. and the encryption engine both are basically in the instance itself. Okay. It's basically the OS actually. And what happens? It has storage volume, like it can be EBS volume or whatever it is, like volume storage. Okay. So this is appropriate only for a basic development or testing okay and it should not be used on any kind of sensitive information or in production why why because basically if the key and everything is in the same location it is higher chance that it can be compromised here first one is clear right perfect the next one is external key management when you say external key management the encryption engine is in an instance and used to encrypt an external storage volume or boot to image mm -hmm. for the operating system that means that so basically we have a dedicated device like for example hsm or whatever it is we have a dedicated server or dedicated device or whatever to basically handle the encryption so so what the whole process here is okay the key management is done separately see this the encryption mm -hmm. engine yeah. will be here inside the instance okay the encryption engine is in the instance itself the key file is yeah. basically in the separate thing is it clear yeah. and this is the most effective model for cloud most effective model why because it's more secure key file and then we have a proxy based so basically there is an instance with the encryption engine and proxy and it will proxy the connection between the actual instance and the storage volume so what happens every time what access happens this guy will basically act as a proxy which will do the encryption and decryption operation for you is it clear this is basically seen more in the past platform okay this is basically seen more in the past platform okay. that's why so this is basically how to choose it Okay, so mm -hmm. easiest one is instance based. Why? Because basically things are very simple. Got it. And at the same time, basically talk about the uh, external one. It's more secure. Key management is separate. Yeah. And for database and all, we can use proxy based. This in the slide is very important. If you want, you can write down also. It's very very important actually. Okay, perfect. So looking beyond IaaS. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically, what happens is in the SaaS platform, encryption is in in almost 99 point cases the it's provider managed. Definitely right. Basically, I don't have any access. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's provider managed only, right? But in the past mm -hmm. side, I can have a client side encryption or application level encryption, and I have a database encryption. I can choose in between as well. Okay. And then we have a proxy base, but that is basically your headache only. Is it clear? Like basically, it is more so price proxy based models that encrypt or mask. So what happens is, uh, it is so this is both of it. This is basically for SaaS and PaaS also. Proxy base. Is it clear? Yeah. This is basically very, very important the exam. Okay, not in the exam, in the real time also. So basically, mm -hmm. what happens is in the cloud key management, what happens is see there are three main uh, options actually. So I'll tell you the most important and the best option you have is physical. That means that okay, like uh, like we have we must have a hardware. This is what you call as hardware key management. Okay, mm -hmm. so basically mm -hmm. most most probably typically an SSM device which is located in your data center. So what happens is whenever you basically go for a cloud platform anywhere, if you if you want to comply with the standards like FIPS and all FIPS 140-2 mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. you have to comply with the you have to have a hardware based key management service. Okay, so basically when when used for a public cloud, 
you typically need to have virtual appliance extension within the cloud like for example let's say for example nowadays the cloud provider itself is offering you an hsm called as cloud hsm this is basically single tenant this, this is basically single tenant so what happens is it is a complete single tenant one and basically what happens is this particular device this particular device will be able to uh, enter and deploy in the cloud provider itself the key management is done by the, in the cloud provider itself okay like okay. having a physical device but basically it's located in the cloud service provider's premises okay then we have a software based key management but basically that means that i install some kind of software and manage it but basically what is the problem software key management can be easily compromised right <laughs> and definitely virtual appliances also we discussed like for example we can have some services or some kind of softwares which is basically as a managed appliance in cloud platform like for example <laughs> i'll show you an example here let's see so if i scroll down let me see i'll show you an example here uh let's see so like this if you search on this you will get a lot of so appliance this is an appliance actually see this okay that means that this is a virtual device which is provided by a different company so what happens you can basically get the the appliance and this device will basically manage your key files for you got it see understand where in the life cycle you are trying to protect the data life cycle is very important so application layer in in encryption solves several issues and expensive to implement so basically for database mm -hmm. and all they strictly recommend transfer and transfer and encryption means i'll tell you let's say for example this is my instance or let's say my vm or web server whatever it is this is my backend database okay basically the database is visible to only this instance so mm -hmm. if i access the data from database from outside or if try if it is tried to access from anywhere it will not work why because there is encryption at the same time if i talk about the if i talk about the instance okay so what happens is instance this particular instance will only be able to access it nobody else can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what it was transfer and encryption got it so for example yeah. this is my instance okay so if i if mm -hmm. if anyone want to get some data from the database or if i want if i anyone want to write something database or if anyone want to do some operation to the database it will be this instance mm -hmm. only if i i am trying to access from outside or if any any other access from outside it, it will not work it will be encrypted that's what you call as transfer and encryption transfer okay. to the instance actually got it so so basically, basically for databases for databases it can be either like a transparent encryption which should be there or it can either be a, like a, a yeah okay yeah. like a proxy so or something key, exactly yeah the key management okay. in the cloud basically if your vendor is offering you some encryption and key management make sure your data is encrypted with your own key files otherwise what happens is it is more risky and definitely mm -hmm. the alternates to cloud basically what happens is so this is not possible like for example it, it is possible mm -hmm. basically if there is some critical information if you want to make it 100% sure then the only thing mm -hmm. you can do is do not move it to the cloud platform okay and definitely mm -hmm. tokenize sense so basically if you're doing some credit card transactions they are not actually transferring the complete user information they are creating some metadata or a key for token for token for that like for and this token is what transport to the network is it clear? Yeah. So basically, I'll give an example. Let's say, for example, you go to a super, super, super supermarket, and there, basically, they want you to keep your bags and everything outside. So you keep your bags mm -hmm. outside, and they will give you a token, right? So it will replace your sensitive information. It is something which will replace your sensitive information. That's what you call as tokenizing. The next one is sensitive data must be kept on private volumes. Do not expose sensitive data, and data must be masked. I'll discuss about masking. So I'll do one thing. I'll share you my recording for the data security domain on, in CCSP. Must go through that, okay? It's very, very important. Sure. I'll show you everything sure. in lab actually there. So data okay. must be masked before going to showing the. Like for example, we have to make sure my data is masked to rem remove the PII's this personally identifiable information, and then only it mm -hmm. must be moved to cloud. And data access managed by the applications or database, okay? So that means that basically what happens is, so the application managed access to information with authentication provisioning and other security controls like database labeling and like for example basically in oracle they have something called as database labeling and all always follow those kind of security controls okay that's it